So yeah, this is uh, week eight of the Opus Magnum 2023 tournament. And Last week, let's go. Yeah, so this was a computation puzzle. So And it was split into two parts. So there's a warm-up part um, for people to sort of get used to the idea of computation and, I don't know, play around with ideas. So the warm-up puzzle, the idea is to compare these two inputs, which can vary. So the there's a simulation process that keeps changing these inputs and checks whether the output is right. The idea is to compare them to see if they're the same. If they are, output a gold. If they're not, output salt. Um, and then the full puzzle is the habitability detector. String matching. Yeah, which is comparing to see if this appears anywhere within this larger input and with the same salt versus gold output thing. So yeah, we'll start with the warm-up puzzle. And we'll just go over the solves on stream for people who submitted to the warm-up puzzle but didn't have a solve for the full puzzle. Um, mm -hmm. So the first up, and there's no particular order to these. Um, I don't actually know what the order is. It might just be <laughs> submission no order. No metrics. <laughs> yeah. I guess you just use the whatever parser it is, whatever the parser defaults to. Yeah, I think it's just submission order, if I remember correctly, uh -huh. for this one. But yeah, first up we have username void. Oh, uh, username void didn't finish. Uh, 10 uh, points, just the name. <laughs> why did it crash? Hold on. <laughs> oh, no, it crashed. <laughs> Oh, hey, that's the exact same name I've made for my. <laughs> An inauspicious start so far. <laughs> you can start the Discord stream again. Oh. Uh. If it continues to crash, though, we can just watch the stream. Yeah. Um, let's, let me do something. Let me change the. Uh, okay, no, it's not randomizing, so that's fine. Okay, let's try again. Okay, it worked. What is this? So... I see. <laughs> Aha, it's using the two atoms are the same if and only if you cannot get unification to Brock. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> So yeah, this is so the unification glyph will only trigger if all four of the elements are on it. So if there are two of the same elements, um, there's no way to get four different ones. Uh, so you can just try every pair um, of other elements that are possible. If unification did proc, then it makes uh, quintessence which is output as a salt because you dispose the other three pieces. If unification doesn't proc, then gold gets wanded over and it's instead making uh, a gold because there's going to be a gold on the debonder that wasn't otherwise. So yeah, the conditionals here, check whether there is quintessence and use it to make two different things happen. And the way you can get quintessence out of match or no match is try every single pair of atoms that could go into a match. Mm -hmm. And you can see here it's trying, the first one doesn't work, then the second one does. And I think there's six total pairs for each Yeah, there's six pairs. That's the algorithm I use. I'm su I'm going to be surprised at seeing what better. <laughs> yeah, I think this is probably do the easiest Do you do all one. combinations or all non-fire combinations? Yeah, that's another thing you right, can do. Right, you can use fire, huh? Uh-huh. You can do that as a case. So next up we have pizzazz. I just uh, do all of them, but do them quickly. Comment is thanks for hosting the tournament. You're welcome. It's fun. Thanks for submitting. So this seems to I be see doing this one does the same thing. Same thing, yeah. This is basically what my TI solve was doing. It was kind of filtering through with two wheels. One oh, one. it's batching. Yeah. So th this one's also <laughs> oh, batching. Can you get away with that? <laughs> right. So on the full puzzle, <laughs> uh, the rules forbid just duplicating the same output uh, five more times once you've found one, but. In the war in the warm-up puzzle, there's no real reason to care because there's no metrics. So this one takes advantage of that to once it generates one or the other, just makes the other one. So we can try. Okay, everybody's first place in this puzzle. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the uh, yeah, it's everyone gets ten points. 
by the way, people on the stream, it's covered up by my avatar, but there's a mod here that is allowing Panic to switch the inputs on the fly. Oh, yeah. That's super cool. If you have the OBS scene easily adjustable, you might move the oh. VC down oh, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you can. can see that little control I... panel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, next up, we have Glass Lady. Oh, Very what is cool this? Pattern. Uh, comment is, oh my god, it works. Uh, I've never done a conditionals puzzle like this before, so genuinely, I was just trying to build something that would succeed, and it did. Yay. Congrats. I see. Yeah, good. Excellent work. Oh, so this is making a separate unification glyph handle each of the six possible matches. So instead of doing like <laughs> wheels and going over them, it's just testing all of them in sequence. And it's the exact same thing. If unification can't proc, then the two atoms were the same. Mm -hmm. Rebig's calling this the trypophobia small. <laughs> to the ear of lots of nearby small holes. <laughs> and yeah, it just puts everything into a waste chain and then starts over again, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, one of the challenges is you will not know which atoms that you put on unification are still on unification afterwards. So in this algorithm, you have to do a lot of rebuilding. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it has to conditionally pick up every atom. So yeah, one one piece of terminology that's sometimes used in the community is ghost atoms, when you don't know if an atom is there uh, or not. Yeah, um, this one has a whole lot of those. Right. So like after this is done, there's ghost atoms all the way here and also on the quintessence output. So it has to move all the ghost atoms yeah. onto a waste chain. In terms of numbers, uh, number of cycles per comparison, this one is rather <laughs> high. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and that's going to be something that matters a lot when you're having to do several comparisons to solve the main puzzle. Mm -hmm. At least like, uh, what was it, 12, 72? Well, not at least, but at... depends on your algorithm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm not going to say the number I'm going to say, but that'll come up later. Yeah. So next up, we have Kazian. This is a fairly simple scan. Wait, didn't Kazian submit for the full one? Kazian submitted to the real solve. Yeah. Why, why, why is this here? <laughs> oh, I deleted the... F uh, okay, this is... Hold on. <laughs> uh... I'll just manually skip people who, wait, OK. I did not download. So the way it works is it uses the Whoops. downloads from the full puzzle, but I deleted that folder because I was going to to make it easier for me later. But I forgot that it, let me just, please hold. I'm going to re-download that. Um, and then I'll restart this auto hotkey. Then, what did Morikanda mean by less than seventy-two? Ah, how many times you have yeah. to compare yeah, things I... in order to get the answer? At a worst it... case, seventy-two is the absolute lower limit, and yeah, it is possible to get lower. Is it worth it? Don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, show different cases. Oh yeah, sure. So yeah, this is another one where it's trying every combination. But uh, this is doing a little something a little bit different, where it's trying them in, like in an order. So you actually have to try eight instead of six, I believe. Yep. Or That's right. Nine. This one facts. seems to be doing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we can try one that does trigger. Yeah, when you're gray coding through it like this, which is the name for uh, a pattern where you can overlap all but the left and all but the right to get something that's useful, basically. So mm. reusing the earth as the left earth after it was on the right, then it'll take a bit extra to cover everything. Yeah, this one also has a bit of a interesting thing on this output where it's like there's a salt that it's grabbing and then the salt grabs the... It's like a not gate, I think, is the idea. Which is kind of a common thing. Uh -huh. That it was more natural to get a salt when it matched. Yeah. 
I had that problem early on with this sort of an algorithm too. It's like, well, if I have salt, that's because there was a match, but I want gold on a match and salt on a no match when I don't have salt. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and the comment here is, first computation solved, can't wait to see other solutions. I can't wait, even though this is my second time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up we have spaceship, spaceship, spaceship. <laughs> Oxy Hayes. Um, I don't think I can do the harder puzzle, but this one not only solves the easier puzzle, it also looks like a spaceship. And from what I can make out, the characters went into space in the lore. Ten points, please. Yeah. Oh. Oh, this shuffles everything. Oh, and it, then it just does. There <laughs> yeah. is a lot of those batches. <laughs> and, well, it batches, though. Got it. That makes sense. Yes, let's watch this again. It's so this is one input. This is the other input. So it keeps moving. Oh, it's figuring out if two unification glyphs proc at the same time. If they proc at the same time, they'll match. Oh, oh that makes I sense. See. This is kind of like the other algorithm, where instead of trying to put two unknowns on a unification, you put one unknown on a unification. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And if you only Can have... Can we see what it does when it matches? Yeah. Because then the bonder in the middle will bond on both sides, so you'll have two quintessence at once and be able to make a different thing. Right, yeah. Right. And yeah, uh, now it's bonded it's together, so it there. just outputs the yeah. gold. But yeah, the advantage of this yeah, type of thing somehow is there's only four things to try instead of six. Oh, yes, the the is, this is the algorithm. Do it several times. Mm-hmm. Because when you don't, when you're just checking to see, can I get unification to proc? It literally doesn't matter which matching or non-matching pair they are. It'll just distinguish does it does it match or does it not match. Right. Which in principle sounds like oh well that's just easier. We we can get the bit that we care about instead of carry caring are they both fire are they both water are they both earth. Yeah, like more directly, and it's using like a single glyph, so like conceptually it kind of makes more sense, but. Uh, next up we have RPO. New solution one, no notes. Oh, RPO didn't finish him. He was working pretty hard all the way up to the deadline. He gave himself a lot of time yesterday and today, but was running into, sounds like, integration. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why does it salt everything in the beginning? Is that viable? <laughs> It's making... I guess this is assuming one of them doesn't change. It makes a quintessence first. Oh, this is the reusing quintessence on. How, how does... Oh, and then it tests... Yeah, what does it do if it's different? Different, yeah. <clears throat> it's definitely doing the thing where it's checking to see which elements it is by when this comes out. Oh, I think I understand. So this one, it's <clears throat> it keeps checking to see which one of the four elements this is by moving these elements around and then using the uh, dispersion to get the elements back and then comparing the other one to it. That's a real difficult algorithm to use. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine why this took a while for RPO. But yeah, it's it's somehow depending on the timing to move the proper elements to see 
But and it seems like it's always so like it's the same. Okay, let's let's try other different ones like these ones. Yeah, it always why does it always trigger right away? There's no way it always triggers right away. Oh, it makes another uh, it makes another quintessence right away. I don't know. This one is complicated. <laughs> I can't completely figure it out. Yeah, I'm not following it at well. <laughs> I, I don't get it, but it works up, Straight up. Try, try, uh, try earth and water. Okay. Because it it makes the it makes a quintessence right away because you you need material for testing. Right. Oh, there. Ah, uh, now it takes a while. Yeah. But yeah, it seems to move things onto different ones of these depending on which element it is. And then if there's ever a pair, then that's when it outputs. Yeah. Yeah, each element so... extends a different stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Next up is Madmaster. Solution name is just a blank solution. Eh? Full stop. Oh. There's just a Ooh, thought. Arm one and the burlo. That's familiar. Oh. Yeah. Yep, yeah, that's that's great coding through. The salt input being in arm one makes it so you don't have to care about whether uh the match ate your atoms or not. Mm-hmm. Twenty one cycles for that. Twenty-one cycles or nine if you don't care about fire because you do it separately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next up, we have Annie May for salt. I didn't think about the fire. <laughs> <clears throat> this one has an interesting three arm going on here. Ending may also mentioned in this or in the Discord chat that if they had gotten thirty more minutes and feeling like you need thirty more minutes usually means needing two more hours because of this puzzle, but <laughs> they would have had a full solution. Uh -huh. but yeah, this one also seems to be one that uh, is checking the elements separately and then doing something to see if they're the same. Oh, I guess it's moving. Uh, depending on when the quintessence goes onto this dispersion, it moves the right elements over here. Uh, it moves the like the complement. It's like it, it finds the three elements that are the complement of this one, and then moves them onto this unification glyph. So then, if this element is the fourth one, with these three being the ones that are different, uh, then it will get consumed here, which is a pretty good idea. <laughs> I'm glad a lot of people also did not notice that you can use trifix. <laughs> <laughs> And I think uh, in the Opus Magnum uh, Discord channel, Biggie had found the pattern on the GIF that reveals whether you use triplex or not. Yeah, what I did was I made a puzzle that took the input and it put a known fire on a triplex sponder and just tried to pivot in illegal ways while holding the other end of it. And mm -hmm. if none of those pivots caused a crash, then it would succeed. But because this runner has so much, like it's using redundancy, I had to add redundant arms to do almost all of the actions oh. <laughs> so that it would oh. be testing it legally. I see. And next up is 7T Storm. It no longer takes longer when they're different, I guess. Uh, note is, yippee, I managed to solve the issue at hand. It seems dropping only one atom in the output zone, then skipping the heck out of it for the rest of the atoms uh, per one cycle is enough. Oh, oh, that's a complex dance. <laughs> yeah. Oh, interesting. So it's 
has to test every single combination to see if they're equal. Speed this up a bit. Yeah, so let's try... Which is the one that would test first here? So it would be Earth, Earth and Earth. Yeah, so then if they're the same, then this creates a pair here. Uh -huh. And does a lot of stuff. Oh. <laughs> To get the right oh. thing conditionally. This output, this thing at the output is definitely very, uh, doing a lot of stuff. But the, the thing at the input is pretty simple, which is that it's just trying every combination of the other three and then putting the uh -huh. input on here. And if they both output a quintessence at the same time, they'll bond together here. If yeah, that makes sense. they're different, then there'll be a quintessence on one side or the other. And then the job of this machine is to detect whether there's a pair here or one on one side or the other. If there's a pair, it outputs gold. Otherwise, uh, it outputs salt. Yeah. All right. And I think that is the last of our warm-up solves. Nice. What's, what uh, are we going to be starting with? with uh... <laughs> well, so I do have to do the... Showcases as well. Are doing showcases first? Oh, showcases for this puzzle. Yeah, for the warm up. There are five of them. Okay. Load the first one. I think, yeah, this is uh, the yeah. same, but I guess a less working version. I think. Yeah. Ah. There's an incorrect output there. Fortunate. But yeah, so it's using output conditionals. Uh, next up from Moraconda is funny batch solve. Ah, uh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> so this one is interesting because it uses like this kind of pseudo output conditional. So if they're different, um... if they're oh, different, the no, gold no, doesn't no. go over. So it's a question of six of one and then six of the other. Mm -hmm. That's one. So you That's can, sneaky. Yeah. Since if it's gold, you'll get to the victory screen before doing this. You can just do this in unconditionally. Uh, <laughs> yeah, when I, I, I saw this all, I was like, huh, that, that is not something I would have thought of as a way of doing this. But it is legal, so. Legal when you can batch. batch. Right. Yeah, assuming that batching is uh, legal generally. Um, next up from Mr. Puzzle is Burlow on the Brain. Uh, takes advantage of the fact that if two cardinal atoms are different, then they can be used to trigger unification glyph. You just gotta find the other two atoms. This so is yeah. Twenty three. And this is using dispersion, I guess, as a way of generating the salt. Oh, that's a neat way of. Uh doing a not game. Well, yeah, on top of the hex arm, so that the hex arm grabs a gold if there isn't a salt already blocking. That's cool. Yeah. And it replaces the gold no matter what. Neat. <laughs> so yeah, this is like a very clean version of the test everything method. Uh, next up, I think Mr. Puzzle submitted a sequence of sort of Oh. oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> depending on which ones were random and which ones were fixed, this one is one fixed, one random. I see. And conduit so that it's in a production. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing production. Uh, we're doing production computation. Yeah. Okay, oh, yeah, there's a note too. Do you want me to read it? I can read it if you'd like. Oh sure. Uh, let me find it. Number 855, Servants Filter. 
This production cabinet was the first iteration among several developed at the university after the discovery of quintessence. By depositing a small sample of cardinal essence and providing a ready supply of elemental salt, this machine can filter from an elemental slurry precisely the cardinal atoms whose essence match the sample, converting the matching atoms into quintessence. Filtration cabinets like this one were initially used for janitorial purposes. Clumsy or mischievous students would mix elemental reagent vials together, and a filtration cabinet would be used to separate them again. However, it soon became apparent that such filters were useful for loftier pursuits by way of pipelining the result of the filter into another engine for further transmutation. Although such uses are beyond the scope of this book, there are other writings in the budding field of information alchemy that the interested reader can peruse. Fontenelle's yeah, Alchemical yeah. Observations, second edition. That's so good. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Puzzle. <Cousin. laughs> I like how it is filtering. Uh, I'm curious, in the case of uh, No Match, because here it was always a match. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you pre-process a three atom stick that will match when it's added to the duplication, so you only really need one unification for all subsequent checks. Right, yeah. You're pre-computing um, what you need to detect it. Because for a unification glyph to detect a particular atom, uh, you need the three other atoms to be the three elements that are not it. Um, so you can s compute those and store them somewhere, and then just keep making new ones of those three and putting them on the other three. Uh, Which is absolutely an initialization headache. <laughs> but allows the result to go fast. Right. Yep. Um, and then the third one, cache and release, is a batching one. This one has an I interesting uh, wand. That's cool. It's doing the same thing, but in the same direction. Mm -hmm. So that when it doesn't suppress, it's just outputting gold every time. That's really pretty. And it also goes for ember. And then we can try it when that's same. And you can see how it works. Since the wand isn't here, this doesn't go over there. So it just uh, pulls the gold instead. I see. All right, that's all the showcases we have for the warm-up. Mm -hmm. So now we can move on to the full puzzle. Let's go. Um, What's um, we starting with? Let me make sure that I have all the most up-to-date simulation results here. And let me just double check if there's no... 30 submissions, right? Yeah, let's see. This up, I have 29 submitters. Right, there's also your sub off. Er, did yeah. Hack, the, did Hack submit? Not, not 29. Go. I'm going by the ranking, sorry. Yeah, 29 plus the. So it would be 32, yeah. All right. So let's load up the first one by Zidrus. Nine thousand. That's what we're starting at. Let's go. <laughs> Over nine thousand, even. It's also really mostly cycles. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the way the metric worked out, Cycles was definitely the most difficult one to get down. Just because of how many, like, it's a six long stick, and there's six of them. And there's four different places. I almost places wonder what it would be like if there's no uh, divide by five on cost. Yeah, so there was some discussion about that. The um, I was thinking of just doing normal sum, but... I decided to make the the stick was actually eight long originally. I was gonna do eight long stick and the uh -huh. normal sum, 
Um, oh yeah. And I was like, that's actually going to be pain when I'm trying to simulate it to add two more <laughs> atoms at the end. So I'm going to make the stick shorter and then do W sum instead. And it was kind of a debate whether to do W sum or sum. So this kind of tipped the scales. I think white is sum would have worked. I think normal sum would have worked nicely. Yeah, I think I someone was mentioning whether they thought the I think it was Biggie actually the the sum and the W sum would be similar in rankings. Yeah, I was kind of thinking because back in explosive logic unit, the best algorithm not only was the fastest but could be implemented more cheaply, so mm -hmm. that there was an actual W sum and some coincidence. But I don't know if that's true here. Yeah, when you mentioned yeah. that, I did check, and uh, there were some differences and some similarities. So it wasn't completely the same ranking. But yeah, as for this solution, uh, it seems to be making a th checking all the possibilities, Just matching all pairs, and then trying to make a stick here and seeing if it reaches link three, uh, which I think is probably the most the straightforward way to do it. Yeah, it's what I did in my test solve. Which will be coming up soon, I think. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's just the same thing here, where you try every possible pair. Um, if you get a quintessence, then you increase the length. Or I guess in this case, if you don't get a quintessence, yeah, you increase the length of the stick by just using one of these that's sitting on there. Then you do conditional. What's the other side of quintessence do then? Just provide salt. Other side of quintessence? Yeah, there's a waste chain for uh, quint atoms. Uh, maybe that determines when. I, I don't know. There's no notes on this, so it does seem to be doing. Something. Yeah, and why does it sometimes go up? And why does it sometimes go right? <laughs> Maybe it's checking, because you do need to know when you get to the end of the stick, so you can know whether to output uh, gold or salt. Because you don't want to output multiple uh -huh. golds or multiple salts uh, if there are multiple matches or not multiple matches. So I think that's probably what it's doing, but I can't tell. It goes, it makes this... I guess it's probably, yeah, de determining when to make salt. Let's try it uh, when they're both the same. Or wait, when it would output salts. Which I guess is, yeah, this Yeah, that should work. Yeah, I think it ah, just counts up to six good. with the length of the stick. Ah, okay. Um, and then if it gets to six not matches, then it outputs salt. But if it gets if, that makes if there's sense. something that does match, then this won't be six long, so it will have outputted a gold, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah, four, not six. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, next and called the same in chat. Yeah. It's interesting because you're kind of duplicating the information to do the conditionals in two places, but it works. Mm -hmm. uh, next up, we have 5381. Uh, What's the metric? 6,000 now. Yeah. So let's see. The note is log number 6831.02c. Uh, Information writer fifty three AT one time system humid year twenty twenty three month three day twenty five. It's yesterday. Um, so there's information here. So arm one grabs three molecule copies a one fourth of six molecule onto it and brings it to the comparator. Arm two grabs the six moves it onto copiers. Um, arm three also grabs six moves it onto copiers. There's just notes on which what each arm does here. Yeah, fundamentally, this solution is two unknowns and two knowns coded out. 
Right. And it's reusing the same unifier the whole time because the quintessence will be there if any one of them didn't match. Ah, uh, yeah. So that that helps not output like like only output once per stick, and it's able to move things around in a way that doesn't collide with that quintessence if it appears there. Mm. And then, yeah, if, if this stick gets long enough, let's see. So, yeah, that one. An early match. Yeah, fire air air is the first match. Are you reading the input in the direction that you think you are? I'm wondering if that's not matching for a different reason. And I think the default input is air air air. I thought it was air air earth. Oh no, I meant like if you want to match the first compare three comparisons. I see. Right. Got it. I see. So then this grabs the hold here because the stick is long enough uh -huh. and then it outputs it and then there's a weird ass but uh, not a weird ass but uh a pretty long waist chaining mechanism uh -huh. that considers all lengths of salt possible right <clears throat> okay, next up we have Talaire. Um I made the elemental comparator first, and that design remains essentially unchanged in my habitability detector. I realized that this computation could be done with three independent modules, one to assemble the sample sticks, one to perform the comparison logic, and one to compile and analyze the data from the comparison. There's no wizardry here, just a methodical, straightforward algorithm. What's well, a trip next to Uh, oh, it passes on some real fires to do the fire comparisons because it doesn't look like it's sending fires when there is other atoms on top of the unification list. I know it is. I believe. Oh, it's yeah. <clears throat> Triplex is used as a binary instead of as any part of the comparator. Right. So. Matches get dropped in as fire, and three matches will cause it to go into the output. Huh. <laughs> yeah, that's like the third module, uh, module, the compile and analyze the data from the comparison. So this is the waste chain if there's no matches, and then this is the waste chain if there's one or two, I guess. And if there's three, it just outputs this. Yeah, we still got to see that happen. Ah, uh, there it is. Oh, that's not if there are no matches. That's if there are all matches. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I guess we can see now what happens if it doesn't match. We can speed it up. Oh, man, the waste on this one is going to be very dependent on the actual uh, set of inputs. Hmm. This is probably what leads to the like, oh, you're six worse in your worst case. Right. How many pluses did Tilaire have? I don't, th I don't think he had any. It might be that the worst case was actually one that would happen to be in the. Like, yeah, that makes sense. Ah, so if there's no matches, it just goes. Yeah, ahead. so this is, uh, yeah, this waste chain is used for anything that isn't match and then if there are multiple matches in it uh, then it would just push this down multiple times and it would just take the bolt off of the first one but yeah interesting way to do it 
where you're using this triplex logic um, to simplify this last part. All right, next up we have- I like that it, uh, well, probably we'll see it again later, but it, uh, this is doing the exact same thing. So I'll say, uh -huh. that, I'll say that I like it about this solve instead of two layers, but I liked it about two layers as well. Mm -hmm. uh, its very first pair is the um, two, three, four from the sample, and then its next is the three, four, five from the sample. Mm -hmm. So that the final two can just be directly breaking apart the sample. Right, so you don't keep duplicating and then have to waste chain it. Uh, oh yeah, notes. Um, oh, interesting. It uses salt from the input, <laughs> the three long input. Oh yeah, the three long input is a source of fancy salt. That's that's <laughs> one of the things that this puzzle allows you to do. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the reason why I didn't add more salt, because uh, I would have liked more salt. Though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Single atom salt is much more useful. It also acts as a salt disposal. Mm -hmm. um, if you're really creative, the three atom is also a salt disposal. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> it's a little harder though. Uh, yeah, just do a bit hard. of, just do a bit of duping. Make a three long uh, salt stick, dupe it, and then I'll put it back on. Mm -hmm. We do a little duping. Uh, Shenanigans. <laughs> but yeah, the notes: the solve turns the exoplanetary sample into four sticks of three and compares the match pattern to each separately. Checks if two atoms are the same by putting both on a quint and trying every combination of two. Uh, if they're not the same, then quint is made, everything is disposed. If they are the same, then one atom gets stored in a counter. If the counter reaches three for a match pattern, then the gold and salt get moved um, to invert, which gets outputted and which gets disposed. I see, so it conditionally moves these around and then uh, outputs them once the stick is finished. And yeah, kind of a cool way of trying all the different combinations by making these two hex arms and moving them back and forth like that. Yeah. Uh, next up is me. This is my test solve. It does pretty much the same thing as the uh, other solves in this. 2467. Yeah, it is doing the that. area count. It's going to be the highest by a lot. You have a big waste. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did not, I did not uh, really optimize this too much. In terms of area, especially one thing I guess I do think is kind of cool is the conditional here, where it's using the stick uh, to move the gold over. So, like you can see at the beginning, it bonds the gold here. Um, so then that's how it only outputs once per stick. How many cycles comparison is per comparison is this? Uh, it has to do eight, and then it's I'm trying doing to it every the... three. One, two. So 24, I guess? 22. Looks, oh, 24. 24, yeah, I see it. The one that is a multiple of three. Yeah. <laughs> and then occasionally it steals a salt, um, so it wastes one cycle. Uh, yeah. Yeah, wasting one cycle is a thing. If you have the salt input buried underneath the wheel and you never know where your salt <laughs> is afterwards because you can't tell which ghost atoms are real. Uh-huh. And yeah, this waste chain is the source of the plus six, I think, that mine had. Oh. Alright, next up we have Catspin. Press two for Critelli. Guys, Critelli is not. 24 22. High. We're getting uh, smaller drops now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Drops that are a thousand. Yeah, it's kind of actually interesting how the different approaches to this sort of segment themselves into different weighted sums. So I think this is the zone of just compare everything and straight comparisons, yeah. Yeah. And then have some large I area. How far it goes. This one has an interesting It does take around two thousand cycles to do it this way. If you're doing twelve comparisons per input six times and you do eight unifications per comparison. Mm -hmm. I do six unifications per comparison. Right, yeah, and the cycles sort of completely dominate this style of solve. 
This one is doing something a little bit interesting though, that where it has this hex arm that sort of moves this out to the side, so it doesn't have to do the, I guess, gray code um, completely because it can shift this back and then come in the other way. But I don't know if that actually speeds anything up. Um, next up we have Mr. Puzzle with an extremely <laughs> large solve. I don't have oh, zoom what? tools. What is this? Don't Mr. Puzzle, what is this? Us. An area, yeah. <laughs> uh, 3680, but 437 cycles. Does it use triplex? No, it doesn't. Nope. Oof. <laughs> Massive parallelization. Yeah, I see at least three unification glyphs. It's fast though. <laughs> yeah, so the. There's a fourth unification glyph. Oh, wait, it's doing the uh, pre processing. Oh, yuck. <laughs> <laughs> yuck. I can see it shuffling around on the unif on the dispersion glyph to give the three atoms in the right order. I see. And it's, it's buddy duping. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> who needs Quint? When, uh, who needs a uh, quintessence input when you can just do this? <laughs> um, so wait, is this like? That's a very uh, busy disposal. Sixteen oh. cycles per output. Oh hey, it oh. reuses the salt, the stick. <laughs> yeah. So the note here: just under two thousand instructions, and at period thirty-seven, this machine is built around the following idea: replace each pattern atom with its three atom cardinal complement. Uh, this idea is really good for minimizing rate. So it's an expensive one-time operation, but uh, the act of comparing an unknown against the complement is fast, cheap, and compact. Uh, the idea is also nice because it generalizes to a match pattern of any length. Just create a unification station for each pattern atom and load the atom's complement. With back duplication, the stations don't need a burlo. Of course, an idea is not the same, yes. same as an Burlo is used only at the very beginning of this console. Uh huh. Uh, to get the machine to exist, I threw parts at the board until I could get it to compute the complements, initialize the unification stations, package inputs, feed the hungry hunger disposal, do some recycling, and get quintessence atoms to a safe place to output results. All this duct tape and twine has definitely murdered my metric score, and I don't have the determination to clean it up, but I'm sure the core idea is the winning strategy. I'll end with a fun fact. The fifth match pattern molecule pulled the, uh, is the only one that matters. Every other molecule from that input is used as a three salt stick. A copy of the pattern that appears above right of the space rocket track. Space rocket track. Uh, is this ah here? Wait, well, this is sort of rocket shaped if you zoom out far enough. I think this is the highest area and highest cost so far. It is also the lowest cycles so far, which is how it's still at the top of W sum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can see the input pattern appearing here. Pretty cool. Oh, nice. All right. Oh, yeah. Do you have anything to say about the your solve, Mr. Puzzle, before I move on? Um, if I had more energy, I would have. If I had more energy and time, I would have uh, tried to redo <laughs> the inputs and outputs. I see. But, like, the kernel's good. Everything around it to make it work is bad. I should have cleaned what is... it up. Oh, well. What? What is you this? Have... The auto <laughs> bonders. Oh, 2217. It's possible that your um, W sum is not accurate. Is this not you? Uh, Guilty uh, bystander literally in a placement decided by whether there's a plus one on theirs or not. Yeah, so oh the, the <laughs> simulation is still running. Um, let, me, let me just check. Hold on. Oh, wait, there is a tie. Fun. Yeah, because if it's possible for... I can't for... believe that even happened with this puzzle. <laughs> it's possible for your solve to have... Let's 
so this was wait what's the metric score here two two one six yeah Website so it's it, two two one seven it is two two one seven um it's so what happens is it's pulling from the sim uh and the uh, sim hadn't gotten far enough to find the two two one seven case yeah but in the finals i'll rerun this afterwards to get the final standings it's still in the right order it's just the ranking is wrong yeah so this is 24th yeah because the other one was 2216 supposedly mm -hmm. yeah this uh guilty bystanders this solution in particular was uh was one that where the worst case was kind of hard to find it didn't come up until uh -huh. like I forget it was like tens but of hundreds of But it did come up in the 128. Right, yeah. That is a long way to go for that quintessence. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, machine starts to the right by Critelli. Uh, inspired by a lock key, for terminology's sake, the three atom input will be referred to as the needle, and the six atom input will be the haystack. Both inputs are converted to. I see to... why the worst case is hard to find. <laughs> <laughs> Both inputs are converted to another form where each atom is represented by a backbone with six bits. The haystack has an is extra this? gold salt on the front of the backbone, which we'll circle back to later. The first four bits represent each elemental. The needle negates these bits. Bit five is only on the haystack. Bit six is only on the needle. When compared at the mass bonding site, the two will always bond unless they are an exact match. If they don't bond, the haystack is shifted so that bits 5 and 6 will always bond in a future bond check. After making four comparisons, if the haystack had ever been shifted, the gold salt at the front of the backbone will index the correct output. That's incredible. I see Kelly in chat saying they thought of the same. I had never thought of anything like this. But <laughs> yeah, having it be presence absence using bonders and scooching. Mm hmm. Ugh. Because, <laughs> yeah, it's like it matches. If if the one side fits into the holes of the other side, then it won't bond. Yeah, this is a four at once wanding where any one wand making it will move the thing, but all of them not making is a match. Mm -hmm. Let's try one where it's. Let's, let's see the match. <laughs> so it doesn't need to do. It, it doesn't need a backtrack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's already converted all of the information into something that is non-destructively readable. Neat. So there it grabs, it grabs, it grabs. It doesn't grab. Wait, where, when should it? Oh yeah, it shouldn't grab for this upcoming one. Or does it? Is it the upcoming one? How far to the left is the part where it actually outputs? Wait, where's that output even? even? Oh. oh, there it is. Wait, where's the gold output? Is it also in here somewhere? It's to the left. The output's to the left. But where's the I think gold? We already missed oh, no, the first there's. Output. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The gold is in the stick, and the output is going to be the same thing. It's just right. whether it is salt or gold. Like, we can watch yeah. the first one go through. Yeah, at the very beginning, it puts a gold in a salt so that one shift will cause it to read the other. Ah, uh, yeah. But having uh. to make this needle encoded stick is <laughs> kind of awkward. As an algorithm, though, this is really cool. I love seeing it. <laughs> yeah. Expensive, though. Mm -hmm. Ah, so here's where it doesn't bond. Ah, I see. So then it shifts. And then that so one length three arm at the bottom gets to do a nice little grab, and everything beyond that will bond. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. That is such an interesting way of doing things. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense, too. Like, Yeah, just conceptually. Bonds are very powerful in Opus Magnum. 
folks want to see uh, one of these fully processed sticks landing on output to see whether, see how it distinguishes gold on the output from salt. If it goes early, it just... Uh... I think the question is going to be down yeah. to what the piston grabs. That piston grabbed a salt, so it's salt output. But That's if it had not been shifted to the left, that would instead be grabbing a gold. Right. Yeah. And then, and then it conditionally out, uh, disposes of the gold if it were if there were gold. Mm -hmm. Cause if yeah, it outputs salt. Right. If it's just outputting gold, it only has to debond the very last one, so there wouldn't be anything here. And then, yeah, it yeah. does this whole conditional disposal thing. I guess it eventually does it once the whole thing is disposed of. Yeah. That's easier to program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this whole thing is just... It can handle any stick of this form. Reb posted a picture in Discord of a key in a lock. <laughs> it's literally, yeah, just trying to match the lock to the key. Yeah, yeah. that's basically what this is. Uh-huh. Okay, next up we have 42 Genius 42. This one is a, back a more reasonable seat. size. <laughs> uh, there are four combinations from the six tick that need text testing against. If you number the items one to six, these are one, two, three, two, three, four, three, four, five, and four, five, six. Um, the original uh, six tick is just... copied. Um, below this, a single salt atom is taken to the side and later passed across to the output area near the gold. The burlo wheel and main testing wheel next to it continuously cycle the six different unmatching combinations. Any non-match will create a quint, which is later destroyed, and no atoms are passed on to the left. Uh, if there are three pairs so if you manage to make a stick of length six, it'll actually push the gold. Nice. Right, yeah. Gold and salt atoms are pushed along by the six stick. If it were possible to have another salt input, it would be possible to double the speed of the whole machine by creating a second uh, inverse symmetrical machine underneath. However, there's only one salt input, so this is, is difficult to achieve. Yeah, the single soul and Burlo coding out all of the things. This is another one of those roughly 2000 cycle, compare everything as quick as possible, but only on one unification. And I'm fire is a special. Was, uh... mm -hmm. um... It was definitely less than 2000 when I did it. Oh yeah, this is also... Uh, in, um, 42 Genius 42 mentions in the notes there was some rare cases that would have caused a crash. Uh, uh because by outputting more than one gold if there were multiple copies found so that's a situation where changing inputs uh like every input being different might have uh caused it to fail but now this one oh, where has it wouldn't outputs. get rid of the extra sticks fast enough and so the next input would get a second gold um Yeah, I'm not exactly sure, but yeah, so not great site um, was helpful in finding that. So yeah, uh, yeah, thanks to not great for making that. The site is great. Made me discover a lot of things a lot faster. Yeah. Cause uh, I had a, uh, I had to steal a salt and that messed up everything. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, this kind of pattern you'd have to steal a salt from the wheel. I have a different pattern, but I still had to steal salt. Because the salt was just uh, in a very inconvenient place. Uh -huh. Also interesting that it makes this long chain of these. Yeah. Right, it's just like codes out everything, all the comparisons you need first. Uh-huh. Uh, next up is Tapa Mouse with Setimo. Very, very relatively cheap and small area, I guess. But yeah, this is the same idea. So I feel like until we get to a new algorithm, we'll just be cost and area optimizing this. Because Mora and I did just some math in chat and came out to around 1,700 cycles to do eight 
comparisons per atom, 12 pairs of atoms per sample, six samples, three cycles per comparison. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. We're just gonna see how many people are actually do this algorithm. Mm -hmm. It does seem like if you if you got stuck on this algorithm, the entire thing was all right. You have a floor of some number, seventeen hundred ish cycles, that is just always going to be in your W sum, and everything else that you can save is just how close to the floor and how well you cost an area optimize it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. This one manages to avoid having to steal a salt uh, somehow. Weird. It probably steals it from the. It probably steals it from the stick. It seems. Yeah. Let's see. Once the comparison is done, it just takes it. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. And also, chat's pointing out that if you can cut the number of uh, Burlo atom pairs from eight down to six by. I guess it would require changing which pair you test in what order on the next and subsequent atoms. I but use that two cycle by like three quarters. I use uh, two unification glyphs for mine. Yeah. I had an idea with three unification glyphs that was actually going to be so expensive and so painful that I didn't do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, note can easily be massively improved. Double unification glyphs is the easiest, uh, which changes the cycles from the 1728 approximately to 1152 approximately but the other cost probably puts it at 1.5k pretty sure the good solves start at 1k so 1.5k is still way too much and it would be a lot of work to do fastest algorithm i could find is convert each atom into a six long stick of fire salt which should be able to hit a cycle count of around 350 including setup uh here's hoping someone else made it but efficiently routing the salts into the stick makers was beyond my geometry skills I think calling out the less than half of that is worth doubling your whole machine leads to the question, but how do you double your disposal or your Brillo or your salt input? Right, yeah. You need to have a design that can be doubled like that. And as soon as you're not able to dispose everything as quickly as it's generated, like you can quickly come up with algorithms that will create more than one incompatible ghost atom per cycle, so you can't dispose everything. And then you have a huge area problem to offset your cycles problem. <laughs> I like to think my area was managed relatively well, but it's got waste chains. Right, next up is Bambi with last minute hotfix. I think my latest design, my air, my salt has two waste atoms in total. Nice. Um, comment is... Huh. This was my first and only solution, and I couldn't be bothered to optimize it, because making even minor changes is incredibly bugsome. I tried to minimize the number of comparisons between elements. Obvious approach would be to compare the match pattern with each of the f uh, substrings, each of the four substrings, for a total of 12 comparisons. You can improve the average case slightly by moving on to the next. As soon as the non-match is found, the worst case is still at 12. Algorithm has some redundancies. If the first two atoms of the match pattern are the same, and the third comparison of the current substring is a non-match, then we can skip the first comparison of the next substring. Uh, on the other hand, if the first two atoms of the match pattern are different, then we can skip the next substring altogether. In both cases, the worst case makes nine comparisons per sample. Um, only difference between these two cases is an extra shift on the lower register when a non-match is made while the rightmost atom of the register is on the duplicator. On the left prong of the multibonder, there's a quintessence atom, but the first two atoms of the match pattern are different, which carries out the extra shift. There's a lot of overhead and area cost and latency caused by false matches being made once the registers move off the duplicators. Yeah, I think this the speed up here is that it's doing six instead of... Uh... Yeah, it's consistent cycle count-wise with that, but it did a lot more cost because you don't have a simple hex arm doing its spinny. It's got a huge track loop instead. Uh-huh. Yeah, folks in chat noting that what Bambi said is, yeah, you can have nine comparisons to get through an entire sample compared to input, and you can make it so that those nine comparisons are how many you run before you pull the next one. Hmm. It's a question of both number of comparisons per answer and number of cycles per comparison. Both are in factors of how many cycles your solution takes. So that 
I'm assuming that's what the air stick at the bottom is doing. I don't think Bambi's actually implemented this. I think it's just the uh, notes mentioned that theoretically you could do nine complete comparisons and get your answer every single time. Okay. Yeah. But the logic on that. whether or not you advance the stick might actually mean that the feedback loop is slow. Yeah. Hmm. Oh yeah, by using, using avoid by six comparisons, I mean just like six uh, atom pairs per comparison. Yeah. Yeah, so I think distinguishing unification kind of attempts per comparison. Right, yeah. I only do six comparisons. It's uh, quite different from everything we've seen so far, though. It parallelizes if you, it. If you place a triplex glyph, you can get three attempts per comparison. <laughs> I know, I know. Yo, John John. Yeah. Uh, this was the most straightforward way of solving the puzzle I found. Just compare every pair of cardinals you need to compare by placing them on a unification yeah. glyph with a pair of known cardinals. Um, then after cycling what's through a... all possible pairs. Yeah. What's a bottom hex arm for? Oh, for when it well, has It makes to... so that there's always two salt, because now sometimes it's allowed to yeah. do a double rotate, which means it can gray code through six with only losing a couple of cycles. Ooh, that's, that's good. Smart. That's good. Oh, hey, it's a gun shape. Oh, yeah, we can try a different. Yeah, we've already seen a solution that's a less than 72 comparison, which is a guilty bystanders key and lock thing. But yeah, the note also says to improve the WSUM score, you mainly need to go faster, which I think could either be done with a better algorithm, but also by simply doing multiple comparisons at the same time with multiple unification glyphs. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, next up we have... Oh, oh there's me. <laughs> the one that works, I hope. That's a pretty, that's a pretty big drop. <laughs> we're approaching the fight. We're approaching the triplex solves. Uh, the comparison section is mainly split into two parts. One checks for air, earth, earth, water, water, fire. The other checks for earth, fire, fire, air, air, water. None of these match to make the quint. The two atoms must be identical. Max input speed on the salt. It's doing two unifications. Yeah. That keeps Burlo real busy. That I tried so hard to find, like, to make this work in 16 cycles per uh, comparison. I got it. Burlo is very busy, as busy as it can be. There's nice. two break cycles in between, but that's because there's a a time where you need two of the same colored atoms in a row. Is it doing uh, disposal every single cycle, thereby no. forcing waste chains? No. It's just oh, that, uh, that one is very hard to throw back in. <laughs> gotcha. I can see the two that are happening. The other two swinging arms are loading unification, not disposing it. Yeah, there's a f two from the quint glyphs and two from the excess atoms that ha have not been matched, and then uh, one from one of the comparisons because you don't need that. One of the if equal, extra one of the extra atoms from if it's equal mm -hmm. is also disposed. That one was a pain. <laughs> yeah, I remember solves where I was doing something similar having so many ghost atoms by the time you reach disposal that my head was hurting. I just found a convenient place to put the disposal, so... <laughs> yeah, definitely. Everything yeah, can access it in one way. way. Having to do um, more distance traveled with ghost atoms just makes bigger headaches. How on earth did we get a drop this big, though? It was 1800, now it's 1600. We're getting to the real good solves now. <laughs> <laughs> How low do we think it goes? I know my number, and therefore I know how low I think it goes, but I don't want to. Any, any guesses in chat? Mm, no clue. 
I guess it would have to come from people who don't have their own selves to spoil by saying it, which is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> There's so few of those people. I mean, I'm here. You said it was a nine per check, right? Oh, Seems I like, like that's the one I started with. That's the one you started with. Oh boy. And it goes real fast then. Okay, we got sub 100 or sub 1000, sub 1000, 650. Sub 1000 most definitely. 800, 364, around 600. <laughs> 364, one better than the EOU winner. <laughs> uh, around 750, all right, all right. See, I, I, I think this was the first- Imagine this with triplex. Parallel Sol. Oh boy. Yeah, this oh, parallel ba processing. Bambi says, just to clarify, my solve did use the algorithm described in the notes in the Discord. Oh, channel. okay. So Bambi helps clear it up. I wasn't able to parse how that was true, but good job. Yeah. <laughs> If I, I feel like it's the register at the bottom. Mm -hmm. All right, next up we have Spiritual Shampoo, Gonk, V1.4, the computer melter. Oh, yeah, you talked about it. Real sponsor. <laughs> or going down in metric points. Yeah, so this one is a fast solve, 497 cycles. Uh, 66 R and 5.5 cycles per equality check on average. First unification identifies the first input cardinal. Dispersion creates the complement. Second unification triggers if and only if the two input cardinals are equal. Technically, the first unification only needs to be used to identify one input, but the 4x4 salt brick can be reused as the input of the second unification and is simpler to reuse everything. Some parts may look like they can be sped up, but it doesn't affect the cycles count since ARM6 blocks the output sequence. This feels like what Mr. Puzzle Dream does. <laughs> Yeah, this is this is also using pre-computed trio matches, right? Yeah. It's it's cycling them, so it's hard for me to see that, but it is that. I think they're in this brick. Uh, like the, the pre-computed trios are on the bottom, maybe? Wait. Oh, that's that's really slick. So tab tab through a brick going past the burlo. Past the burlo or past the bottom burlo? That's not oh, a real burlo. burlo. <laughs> oh, past the, past the oh, there's a this, little which, oh, there's this burlo. The, there's there's an imposter burlo. That's fun. <laughs> no, I mean the, burlo the normal one. Because it makes a four by four brick, but then it replaces the diagonal with the atom to test. Uh huh. So then, if the test fails, you get your complement easily. Oh man, that's slick. Oh yeah, because then the complement's gonna be. So okay. then you'll have you'll have one quintessence and three complements. I see. Also, I love what this <laughs> is doing. The you were saying was Arm Forty One. Who's that? Whatever that's doing. <laughs> Arm Six is this one yep. on this triangle track. Uh, R41 is doing comparisons. Or, or I should say, so the 4x4 brick turns into... The 4x4 salt brick turns into stuff for the unification. The quintessence indicates the correct match. The other four sticks need to be fixed. So the quintessence is turned into the complement stick based on timing, and then the other three sticks are... Oh, based on... Uh... that. Oh, Based on time, it makes a lot of sense. That's clever. Is this forced 6P or does it successfully do 1P? Uh, it looks like 1P. Seems to the be. The instructions fit on screen. Amazing. Yeah. I think it's 1P. Oh, that's what the imposter burlo is doing. Oh, that's good. It's loading. It's loading the. It's loading the thing to check onto the diamond. The, the three comparisons. 
Yeah. Oh, that's so good. But there's four things. So the. Huh. Paxton mentions that it's doing. It's comparing first four, middle four, last four, all against the same atom of the match pattern. Oh, so it's like doing the transpose. It's a transpose, exactly. Oh. Yeah. Which means you can't really make a three stick. You have to make four separate sticks and check whether one of them is length three at the end. Which it's doing. You can see the stacks of quint. Oh, that makes sense, because then that's right. It's the same. Okay, yeah, that, that now everything makes sense, because it's making the same uh, complement four times. And then checking. Ah, okay. This is... Yeah, I was looking at everything kind of uniformifying down in the bottom left and wondering, wait, how the heck does that work? But that's because it's making the complement four times. Right. They're unifying into um, whatever the complement is. Right, so it's checking the first uh, atom of the match against the first four atoms of the uh, sample, second against the second through fifth, third against the third through sixth. I love this community. So many cool ideas already out here. Yeah. Uh -huh. to go. Mm -hmm. Also, the recycling. It this actually kind of reminds me of uh, my initial ELU solve that had this big ring of junk moving around. Yeah, I liked that solve a lot. Oh yeah, I remember that. Uh, next up. The almost found the, uh, what's it? Just almost found the finite machine. Oh solve. yeah, In, instead of <laughs> using the same register, I kept... You don't want anything to stick around, so you have to recycle it. <laughs> I was just making a new state machine every time and then throwing it away. Or recycling it, yeah. Like the person who instantiates and seeds a new RNG before calling it every time. <laughs> uh, it's also point. an expensive one. <laughs> Wait, what was the previous? Uh, previous cost? Two, 20, previous 20, 29, 20. Oh, 1555. Okay, yeah. Four, so this is off. like a hundred drop. Uh, there were too many different strategies for this puzzle. To keep myself sane, I used a simple heuristic of how many total checks on top of a unification glyph was needed. The following was the result I calculated for all strategies I could think of, from least to most complex. 1. Sort of match pattern and substring for each substring. Uh, 576 checks. Test for inequality between the match pattern and each substring by loading both at the same time. 432 checks. Sort the match pattern once, then. Sort each substring, testing if the three atom pairs match. 300 checks. Sort the sample once, using logic to reconstruct each substring. Then do 3A, 156 checks. Use the match pattern to selectively take out an atom from a complete set of four, then test each atom in the substring, 84 checks. Okay. Yeah. 84 after, checks is the one he went with then, or not? After much testing, I landed on a choice between 3B and 3C. 3C had half as many checks, but something to note is the 3B sorter is much easier to build. Based on my own testing, a 3B core could do a 17 cycle check with 400 G and 40 area, while an 8 cycle 3 C core was 1600 G and 170 area. Uh, what drove me to 3 C was simply time. I had already built a 3 C core and was going to use it. 3 B's approach of 3 parallel sorters while using logic to reconstruct each substring. So it sounded like logic hell. Who knows, maybe the winner of the puzzle will use exactly that kind of approach. This note is already too long and rambly, so I'll leave it here. The hell is this? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know what sorting means. <laughs> I'm amazed that the first thing he does is he builds a quint using salt and a unification, just to then drop it on dispersion. I was doing comparisons, I have no clue. <laughs> what comparison it does, no clue either. <laughs> so it is passing the match pattern down into the unifier, and it's trying to determine which of the four atoms it is. But I can't see underneath the chat blog what it's actually doing with those comparisons. If you could move the solution a little left. 
I don't think it actually helps me understand it to see it better, which is a problem. <laughs> In chat, Starfish says, this solves selectively removes the matched atom. I look forward to the biggie blog that tries to explain all of these. <laughs> Man, my work cut out for me. <laughs> Twenty one hundred G, yeah. I think of the fast solutions, cost matters, but of the slow solutions, cycles matters. W sum is just kind of really punishing that way. Mm -hmm. With so many people saying that they're coming up, I feel like we're due for another pile up. Pile up would be neat. Says Piggy, who is probably still a while away. Okay, Starfish says it's the three atom complement. So how does it represent which three atom complement it is? With four three tiles. What does that mean? Yeah, I'm struggling to see in a like visually obvious way where it's getting the three complement, but the three complement is the only way I can see the solution working as effectively as it does. Oh, so it's but it has these... to disperse it every time to rebuild it, which is a nightmare. Oh, so it's pulling. So that. okay, so we have these three elements here, and it seems to be pulling. So it moves all of these onto these, and then so these four bonders, it bonds whichever one is the atom it wants to match. So I, that's what it means. That's what it means by sort. So these so are the I four guess it atoms. Kinda does what spiritual shampoo does but cuts out the bricks and then here it has uh earth so it's pulling the earth out then it makes this three long stick which it then compares um it's it's doing it in the same order it's not doing the same one uh four times so yeah it has to set up and then it has this steady state where it's able to continually pull out the one that it doesn't need anymore, and then make the stick of the right type. And then they just keep cycling around doing that. I see, I see, I see. But you can see here uh. the, this, these sticks that it makes, those are the complements. But you have to pass atoms through each other, and that's just... Uh. I, well, that's what Starfish is good at. <laughs> <laughs> True, yeah, that's the uh, latency-optimized motion pathing it's just so much expense and it's so headache looking to try to get right <laughs> and there's also a lot of area and cost spent on setup like all this stuff here is just not yeah. moving at all now i wonder if that could be compacted but yeah i this... can see why starfish wanted a quintessence input <laughs> <laughs> this idea of like, making so salty about quintessence and he builds his own <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up, we have Kazian. Kazian is actually next. What is this? Um, Do we finally get simple shit again? This it's a thousand cycles, so not quite simple. It's comparing in two places. Oh, this is so pretty! The fake Burlo and the real Burlo working together. <laughs> ah, slightly different shapes. But looks like myself, but function. better. <laughs> Yeah, it's doing, it's, yeah, uh, parallel. Like, it's actually doing two in parallel. And yeah. it's handing off, yeah, yeah, like, moving over both of these burlos. So yeah, this machine uses the na naivest algorithm of comparing the match pattern to the sample at every index, requiring 4 times 3 times 6 equals 72 comparisons. Comparison is a long operation. Given this massive multiplier, this deep discount on cost, and the not-quite-negligibility of area, I find that, and please listen carefully, Speeding up comparison is the only part of this computation that actually matters. Saving a single cycle on the computation <laughs> would be repeated 72 times, and I can afford 8 pistons with that. So how do I make comparis com comparison fast? The basics are that comparison occurs by placing the two elements in a glyph of unification and trying all six combinations of the two other elements. The elements are different, quintessence will form, which I can use as a failed com com comparison signal. The six combinations can be supplied by a single hex arm rotating nine times, two to reset, and one dead turn because the elements cannot be lined up so neatly. The hex arm tries the elements in pairs in this order, where the second element of one pair becomes the first element of the next pair. 
Earth, fire, air, water, earth, air, fire, water. The air, fire combination would be wasted since it is already checked earlier with fire, air. This would take 9 times 3 equals 27 cycles per uh, comparation. Note that the hex arm has to cover the salt input and be powered by both the calcifier and Van Brillo's wheel to solve the questions of how do I change the hex arm's elements as it rotates without losing any time, and what do I do if elements are covered by unification? Uh, this is a very long note. So yeah, two flywheels can share the same salt input, but perform their uh, comparisons in parallel. Um, this mega operation depends on how I can simplify the quintessence logic. There is no need to check for quintessence after in every individual equality test, only once after every set of three. So that's just like 5381 did. Um, there is some sleight of hand in the layout. The salt input is buried under spinning arms. Uh, so I assume each quintessence glyph actually does all six checks. I think so. Or does it like share the checks <clears throat> like I do? Um, let me look at what it's doing here. It seems like they're doing individual checks because I see identical magic, identical patterns on both. Yeah, it's yeah. doing, it's doing two full checks in parallel. Yeah, Quint Glyph 1 does indexes 1 and 3, other does 2 and 4, according to guys in the comments. Ah, uh, yeah, that's what that's one way I thought of doing it, but it seemed much more complicated than what I ended up doing. And yeah, the, the fact that you don't have to move Quint away until you've yeah. checked the whole needle actually simplifies a lot. Mm -hmm. Who needs to count to 3 when the 3 is just 0 plus 0 plus 0? Yeah. It's interesting because you can kind of get both bits of information whether you're trying to pull away the um, input atoms or you're trying to pull away the quint because one is there for no match and one is there for match. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I'll read the end of the note. I've learned from the best during my tenure at House Van Bergen. May we all pursue our opus magnum. Alchemist Kazian, you still not a brick. <laughs> right, there's no bricks in this solve, congrats. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of indiv individual atoms flying around. Uh, and yes, as Cuckoo52 says in chat, I think their solution is next. Cuckoo? Uh, the only person who said it was Fiesta, I think. Oh, someone said there's... Why did I think Cuckoo52 said that? I think it was Rebex. Rebex said there was was coming soon. Oh. We are seeing a pileup. Maybe it was in... Anyways. <clears throat> this one has a cool... I saw Rebex. X track. This one's faster and larger. 844. Last one is 1,000 and... Ooh, this is cool. It's got Cuckoo52 style... Oh, <laughs> interacting oh, oh, oh. So yeah, I... Th you this... know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of last year's uh, Goodbye Galaxy Solve. For computation CX. <laughs> oh yeah. But yeah, this is another like lock key solution, I think. Ah. Where it keeps trying. It's wrapped the locks around into a compact disc. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, since there's six, I guess that it doesn't actually work that way. <laughs> It's just comparing three at a time anyway. But yeah, it the bonds only happen if it's the same element, because the four elements appear each in their Are own in different row positions. Here. Neat. So it doesn't have to do the full seventy two. Right, yeah. It's, Does it? Well it's the it determines which position to put it in just by doing the the four comparisons to identify which atom it is, and then conditionally putting it in the right row. Yeah, it does fewer unifications, but it does just as many information checks. They just happen in a brick instead. Right. <laughs> as John John says, it's 72 just way faster. Uh, we go from still out of brick to oops, all bricks. <laughs> <laughs> it's more of a hexagon. Or a ring, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> A giant ring shaped brick. I love that the match patterns, because you were allowed to pull them, are the brick. Right. <laughs> it makes it quite uh, fast to build it.
Okay, next up we have a smallish drop to Ebonov. Okay. Eight metric size drops. So wow. all the events here. Actually, this was a really good balance. All the parts of weighted sum uh, and start with a five. Mm. Uh, there's a compliment. It's building compliments. Oh boy. This is the cheapest compliment builder we've seen so far. Starfish and this are the only yeah. compliment builders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so notice space colonization, colonization motif for space colonization story. After a bootstrap shipment, colonies are largely operating on their own. Algorithm. Plainly do 12 comparisons parallelized in three matching stations. Conditional behavior. Uh, arm 12, 13, 14 pulls in a constant air with water in each match, and arm 2 pulls in a constant fire. Uh, arm 2 has. Oh, is this. Yeah, I don't think. Is this compliment? Or... I think this is yeah, it is compliment. Oh, it I is. mean, it spent the whole first 200 or something cycles just doing compliment. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, design implementation and aimed for 10 cycles per match with test kit recycled and winged the input stick delivery and let arm 30 and to less extent 35 balloon rate. Uh, reused arm surrounding central unification for test kit construction and output logic, thus unsuitable for 1P. Looping by disposing kits should be possible with all those pistons, but that would be even more laggy. <laughs> if I had more time, I would organize the three match stations differently to make stick distribution less painful. This is also doing the transpose. Haxton called it out in chat too, but you see since it's passing off fours at a time instead of threes, the, in the information is actually sent from three locations and they all have to be present. Right. Right, because each one, each of the stations does just one of the atoms from the input, so it has to handle four. Or one of the atoms from the pattern. Oh yeah, starfish and chat. Uh, yeah, duping versus because yeah, duping you just it since the atoms never get consumed, you can just duplicate onto the ones that do get consumed, then dispose of them and bring a new salt duplicate again. And it's six p. Right. I think this style of solution pretty much has to be, unless you're going to... Uh, right, yeah, because of all the setup. The set, yeah. yeah, I think Moraconda had said something in Discord at one point. I'm like, yeah, my idea is kind of forced 6P, and I'm like, well, she's using the same one as I am. <laughs> oh, Moraconda's not on it yet. I see. <laughs> but yeah, three Just stations, complement each there. station. Yeah. Uh, each station. It's convenient because you... The information of what each element of the pattern is gets to stay localized to each of these spots. Um, yeah. And you just distribute the information of the match. All right, next up we have Goodbye Galaxy. Panic Attack. The plus 12. <laughs> oh wow, that's compact. This looks like a Goodbye Galaxy solve already. Yeah. Ah, I see. This That's is very Kazian similar to yours, ball. isn't it? This? Does it? I think it's more similar to Cassian's. Yeah. Oh, I okay. can't tell. Yeah, because it's doing two in parallel. Oh yeah, so no, nothing especially fancy here. This checks all 12 times, with two checking stations that six checks per output. On match, an atom is moved to the left side. Three matches allows the stick to wand the gold, which is then grabbed and wands away the salt. Getting Saul's yeah, working more was to mm -hmm. getting Saul's working was torture, especially finding Brillo patterns that worked for both hex arms. But optimizing was quite fun, and I was finding saves every day right up to the deadline. This feels more like a proper sum solve than a weighted sum, and faster algorithms will likely trounce me. Yeah, the gold, yeah, the I'm cost of it is still good. yeah. But yeah, and this one, I guess Kazian's built the second Burlo. This one is using the same Burlo for both. So a lot of uh, cleverness required to get both duplication patterns working with the same Burlo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this has a little higher area, but about 400 less cost than Kazian's. So that's pretty soon. Hmm.
Alright, next up, we are into the top 10. Yo. Oh, I've top 10 already. Fiesta. Fiesta. Note is, there are lots of cool pattern matching algos out there, but the ones I looked at all seem to have a catch. Their worst case behavior on small inputs is no faster than brute force while being significantly more complicated in concept. So I committed early on to a brute force approach. Other simplifying decision, estimate an algorithm as ingredient of element identities. Um, is this using complement or? No, this is using the same thing like the. It's just well better optimized, I suppose. Yeah, it's it also uses it uses dispersion to recover some atoms to use for the next test set. Two pipelines uh, using dispersion to recover atoms. Mm -hmm. so really don't, don't need a burlo everywhere. How is it so fast though? What's it doing faster? It's six checks in two places. Right. Because ah. the previous parallel ones were doing the eight checks, I believe. It doesn't feel like it's doing the checks fast, though. I guess because most of the time it's ghost atoms. Yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, because it's not just a uh, wheel spinning, duplicating salt constantly. It's stuff moving in different places. It also is the leave the quint so that there's a lot of time after the first quint is formed where there aren't enough atoms. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, fun fact, this algorithm is so glacially slow that adding the parallel processor on the left side saves 600 metric. I expect that this is much too slow to be competitive, but it is good enough for me. I don't know, 10th place is pretty darn competitive. <laughs> um, P.S. Check out my entry for the most ridiculous but necessary track shape contest. Uh, I guess that's this. The on one the that has side. a river in the left. Yeah. Ziggy zaggy. Yeah. Interesting. I assumed that awkward tracks would come from some sort of initialization where you needed an arm to be in the thick of it, but then get out of the way once you were done with, say, building complements. Mm -hmm. I guess it's just geometry, though. I think, yeah, it's just having to shuffle around the atoms to get all of the different comparisons, right? All right, next up, number nine, Donald's Ketchup Packet from Revix. <laughs> what a name. Hey, there's <laughs> triplex glyphs, finally. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, triplex comparisons. Oh, wait. Why is it <laughs> sorting everything? <laughs> oh, this is so cool. It's encoding the atom in a stick of salt fire that it is testing so that it can use binary logic anyway. It's just a state machine with triplex encoding the patterns. Mm -hmm. Hey, Rebix, what um, what input causes this to be the reddest? It might just move the red along. Let's see. The idea. This idea started earlier in the week when I pitched the idea of a tumbler lock mechanism to panic, a mechanism that allowed checking against all three of the needle elements in parallel. The first implementation of it was pretty much a physical copy of a tumbler lock, which meant it was bulky and slow. Eventually I settled on this version of it, which encodes the needle into a large stick, then allows each of the four possible needle positions to either pass or fail, depending on whether it matches. If it matches all three in order, it passes the gauntlet and is used for simple presence conditionals. Yeah, it's, it's always only three fire, just... Yeah, the three are just like coded into the position within a set of atoms. That makes sense. Since my push to talk is caps, I, I did like a nice ah in chat, but it came out like an ah. <laughs> so, ah so this is a Ian Lock algorithm, but uh, more compact. Yeah, it's using triplex instead of regular bonds, so yeah, it's easier to make and move around. Spreading out things over. Key and lock is something that I never considered, so it's so cool to see these solves. These are just kind of alien to me compared to the two that I did think of. Right, yeah, it's like using the geometry to um, 
do the comparison, just like, is it in the same place rather than using the... I mean, it uses the unification at first, but then after that it just uses geometry. I guess this is the same. I should, like, switch these up somehow. Yeah, so it just moves it. So one thing that's shared between key and lock and complements is you have encoded the match pattern into something more convenient to access than itself. Right. Because it doesn't change, so you can do the conversion once and then just reuse that converted format. It's faster. Um, all right, next up we have a playtest solve from Gecko. Damn. <laughs> um, Wait, where's Paxton's playtest solve? Paxton's been popping off in the chat like, I'm beating all these really good solvers. <laughs> <laughs> um, ah, yes, tracker loop, hell. <laughs> so, at first, um, I made a machine that compared an exosample atom to a match pattern atom every six cycles. Uses use six quinglyphs. This ended up with a W sum of about thirteen sixty. Um, to beat a machine, it beat it. A machine would need to compare atoms at most every fifteen cycles. A twelve loop or a nine loop seemed like the best candidates. I kept trying to figure out how to get hex arms next to the quinglyphs to work, but with only one atomic salt input, couldn't figure out how to get that to make that to work efficiently. So went back to track loops, carrying the yeah, this is just the six comparisons uh, parallelized. This looks like my solve, but like parallelized better. Uh huh. Right. Yeah, it is your. It's the Nicole same. Nicole and both did it blind. So even though they're play testers, it was completely done as a competitor, no spoiling themselves and within the time limit. Mm -hmm. Except they knew the puzzle beforehand, I assume. Yeah. They just didn't start and, and didn't see other solutions. Yeah, Hexton made a playtest. So there was an earlier version that had the eight long uh, input. Uh, but apparently that solve had some fundamental problem when it went through the checker, so. Uh -huh. but yeah, this is doing the similar thing as BIST solve, where it's moving the same input across two different. Yeah, except it's using a track loop to do it way faster. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, it's doing something interesting. It brings some expense, but it is speeding it up a lot. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, I predict that my strategy could be improved to 1250 with layout changes. I can also imagine someone managing a 10 loop with a similar approach, maybe involving two track loops at the bottom. I predict the winning solve will have a three digit W sum. I currently can't conceive of any helpful black magic, uh, but expect to be assigned by the stream. Next up, we have Tweedle D. Ah, a three-way triple paralyzed. Some glyphs. So yeah, this one seems to be doing all three comparisons at a time, moving the atoms in the right order across all three. Oh, that's slick. It's so deliberate with when the uh, hex arms rotate because you have to be like taking into account the flow of the lower atoms too. Right. And then it shuffles them out as it shuffles them in. <laughs> this is gorgeous. I really like how this looks. Yeah, so if one of them gets... So, let's see. If one of the atoms gets like consumed in this first stage how does that how does it not mess it up doesn't matter because that means there's a no match among the three. Oh, oh. that's it's, it's leave the quint there strats but triplized right that's very clever because the 
part of the difficulty of this puzzle is regenerating these atoms um, over and over. But here, it's like you don't need to because it already um, didn't match, so there's no reason to do any more work. I also like how there's a very obvious collision that never happens because it's always ghosts. Like, you're pushing the quint on a track while you rotate at length two underneath it, mm -hmm. but there will always be a gap where it is rotating oh, yeah. if there's actually a quint there. <laughs> right, yeah. So yeah, this is basically Fiesta's algorithm in a different, like it's the same paradigm, just a different Marvel computation version of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I guess it's detecting whether or not it's a salt somehow. What does it do with this salt anyway? Does it have to... Oh, it's making a waste chain. I recognize the arm that's only purpose is to move gold back from a debonder to a bonder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the uh, like converting the result into one of the two outputs is kind of surprisingly tricky. So that was a big drop. I didn't even notice. We're at 1178 now. Oh, yeah. We're one away from my initial solve 1177. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up we have Haxton Fire filter There's the Haxton solve So here we finally have Triple X Triplex. Thank you, goodness <laughs> me <That's like laughs> My initial solve was this exact idea In roughly these stats I think faster but bigger area So it's very cool to see that that's what Haxton settled on mm -hmm. But yeah, the benefit of Triplex Is that you can test whether Both of them are Triplex quickly Or either of them are Triplex You can just Mo or either of them are fire. You can just handle the ah, fire. I use a known fire to do it. Right. Yeah, right. You, stick a, you stick a fire on the other end of the unification because it's never going to be one of the ones you need, and then you just put three atoms on the other. Right. So it's like way yeah. fewer comparisons. So first you get the fires out, and then you tell whether they're both fire or only one of them, and you filtered it down to about half as many unification attempts. I think this takes 216 unifications to solve the whole puzzle. And triple that, you get somewhere around 648 cycles. So they add a little bit more for latency here. Right. And initialization. Yeah, I thought a lot about the limits of this approach, because it was what I spent my first three designs on. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to what you eventually settled on, because it sounds like this isn't it. <laughs> but this was good. This made me like not try to look harder until I was like, no, this is just not fast. But it is far faster than not using triplex and trying the same thing right <clears throat> and it seems like not too many people uh uh thought of this way of filtering. yeah because <laughs> uh not too many people stopped here right <laughs> yeah maybe that's it but I, yeah it's it, we're in top 10 so <clears throat> anyways next up we have with a uh, super hexagon oh this Oh wow, so much parallelism to get to 455. <laughs> so you know, what, you know what you know what Tito D did? To Tito D did? Yeah, let's just do it twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wait, it's it is that, isn't it? This is Tweedle D's algorithm twice. It's yeah. Big <laughs> I like that it's using the hex arms themselves to bring the quintessence through the pipes. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Clever. If I had seen this without seeing Fiesta's and Tweedledee's solutions first, this would just be complete insanity, but now <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, I see exactly what it's doing, it's just doing it faster. Right. Yeah, it's actually pretty cool how the like ideas from previous solves have shown up in like different ways. Yeah, it's one of my favorite parts of the streams. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, all waste is disposed. The disposal is busy. <laughs> 
He had Death Star vibes. What does Arm 34 do? Which one's Arm 34? <laughs> <laughs> I think oh, it's pulling the piston assault. hiding next to Gratelli. Yeah, it pulls ah, yeah, I see it. Initialization, maybe? Seems like it. No. Yeah. Oh, it's and... it's uh, part of the... Oh, it's for the output? output? Yeah, having assault present on the output when you're throwing Quint away is hard. Yeah. Because yeah. Quint is your signal that you have no match. And if you don't disperse it or somehow otherwise get assault, you need to pull it off the source, which is often a big eddy. Mm -hmm. This one is also using the uh, Mr. Puzzle approach, uh, I guess, in the warm up of like suppressing the uh, gold with the salt. It's a salt. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, yeah, I went by really fast there, but it swung it onto here as Arm 47 moved that way. Uh huh. And then, yeah, if it's going to be a gold, the salt gets moved up to this one, so then that doesn't happen. And then it gets moved back somehow. And now uh, just a new salt comes in. Yeah. And because it's able to make two outputs at once, because it pulled two match patterns, they actually drop right after each other. Uh... Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, it pulls two. All right, next up at number six, have a pretty significant drop. We are now below 1,000. Sub-1,000, let's go. Right Mark under the 990. Nice, compliment <laughs> Um, No, it says, ah, why? TLDR, convert match <laughs> pattern to an opposite match pattern. Dupe off opposite match pattern for element matching. Uh, output gold if the match doesn't fail three times in a row. Output salt if it fails to not fail three times in a row, four times in a row. <laughs> That's <laughs> both That's a way to words it. and a way with algorithms. <laughs> um, oh damn, it's speedy though. Yeah, it's real speedy. Yeah, you start to be able to do a, a full sample every forty-eight cycles, so you get six times that. That's only two hundred and something. Mm -hmm. Three twenty-four. Yes, yeah, three twenty-four. Plus, however long it took you to init, which gives you around 400 if you do a bot. Yeah. Yeah, it says it checks against. Oh, yeah. So the main body of my solve duplicates off the opposite match pattern. On a match, contestants activates, which then gets disposed. On a non match, three quarters of the elements get disposed, and the other one is passed down to the output section. Um, it checks against the exoplanetary sample in the order 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4, 3, 4, 5, 6, 5, 4. Interesting. Yeah, you kind of have to do cursed things to secondary optimize this. Or not secondary optimize, but like non-cycles optimize this. Uh-huh. Um, but it, yeah, it sets the rate for the solve at a steady state of 12 checks per input times 4 cycles per check at 48R. Uh, taking a match pattern every 4 for 3 salts seemed very convenient, and also nears max disposal throughput. Oh yeah, look at that disposal. Uh, if there's no match. Yeah, when I tried to supplements with disposal on every single atom that was it was filled you have to even like you literally have to attempt to dispose the quintessence and the lowest of the three atoms at the same time otherwise you won't have enough time to dispose things mm -hmm. there's another way to avoid waste though mm. Throw that's just refilling the match pattern as suppression. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, spiritual shampoo says, just dispose them into the input SMA. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. It's also cool how it makes this uh shape with the compliments here. I mean, so I've either simple algo plus triplex gets a lot more efficient than I thought, or that was the one. Haxton's was the one we would see. Because I got only to about 1,030 with the triplex algorithm before I realized I needed to be pursuing something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, it's the only one that I know of. Uh, I haven't looked at all of these 
So I don't know. Should mine ever make it in his showcase or not? Hmm? Like if I put in my triplex solve as a showcase right now to load it, because it's like a better version of Axton's, I think. Oh, uh, I I could probably re-download for showcases, yeah, if you want to submit it. Okay. Um, but yeah, next up we have Transcendental Guy in fifth oh. place. Congrats. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So, about the solution, n size of the string, m size of the pattern, p number of inputs. Um, there are better algorithms, but yeah, since the pattern is constant, it makes sense to pre-process it so we can compare with it faster. I do it by calculating the complement of the characters, putting them on the unification. So since each comparison consumes them, we need a fast and cheap way to reset them. I found this way to do it with period 8, area 40, and cost 280g. It seems like going any faster when you double the gold or generate a lot of waste. Uh, also, three comparison modules seem to be the sweet spot. So it's complement. Yeah, doing complement with three entire comparison modules. Of course, this will be so fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, three thirty <laughs> cycles. Um, so, my wish list for this solve is a way to give the hex arms the trash, so we can merge into the disposal. A smaller and cheaper way to do the preprocessing. A way to put the inputs of the modules closer together. Um, I think that the best I could do with this all is about 1500G, 250C, 150 area is 700. Uh, and about the title, I proved that if deciding a machine has a rate is not computable, even with a halt oracle, and I uh, plan on writing a paper about it. So even if God himself gave panic a halt oracle, he wouldn't be able to stop my shenanigans. Interesting. <laughs> be interested to read that. Oh yeah, also Calyuresis in chat. Um, has pointed out that Penapig needed to be yeah. below fourth place to not be first place. So yeah. the fight between Kali and Pentapig has been strong, but they're both so good at this that they're both going to be in the top four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who else is it? It's me, Kali, Pentapig, and one other. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's. See. Well, I think it was... Yeah, but they're, they're up next. Uh, it's Kevlarian. Oh, yeah, right. Kevlarian! Heck yes! <clears throat> um, what is an input but a conditional disposal? <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Yeah, there's also this... So this nest of hex arms. Uh... For a while, I dismissed three cycles per comparison to be not even worth testing. Surely it would be too expensive and complicated. Then I realized that by placing unification and dispersion right, the atoms would seamlessly recycle back into the checker without any fiddling. All that was left was to set it up. Of course, this is probably still too expensive and complicated. I'm guessing there's a five period machine with a similar recycling idea that gets around 800 weighted sum by destroying this one on cost and area. I just can't be bothered to build it at this point. Um, I found this puzzle to be way more about delivery and disposal of atoms than the computation of algorithm. Contestants logic is temperamental. For this reason, all my solutions heavily featured hex arms. Here's what this does. First, it converts the match pattern into three anti-match shells. These get held, held by arms 5, 6, and 7, um, which are these arms around the outside. Um, uh, the key part of the conversion is shuffling the atoms on the glyph of dispersion so that no matter which element each atom is, you always end up with the right three atoms in the same places at the end. There was some work done to pick the order of cardinals that are checked in the process. I think this is near optimal. Second, it loads up the this main This is starfish holes. sorting happening right there, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, it loads up the main wheels. This is a... Setup is complete. We've only wasted 157 cycles. Third, brr. Every three cycles, it tests an atom. If it doesn't match, it wands off the salt and makes a zero to three atom buffer. Every three checks, the top salt, if it exists, wands gold out of the way. I think checking for non match is cleaner because the machine doesn't have to count. Also, checking for non match makes sure that the machine has the salt available when it's time to output. The other way, a sample that matches none of the input atoms will have to find another way to get salt. Only two other things to draw attention to, the goofy input delivery. Amazingly, this worked out to the same cost and area as my stick-based input I had before. However, it allowed me to get rid of pause between inputs and run at max rate the whole time. Uh, hooray, five metric points. Uh, two link three arm dodges, probably known to the wizards out there, but I found it in this puzzle. Check out the burlo for what I mean. So yeah, this... Oh yeah, it's doing so many of those uh, counterclockwise dodges. This is such a cheap compliment solve. 
No, it gets far cheaper. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> but yeah, this whole idea of taking the output of the dispersion and putting it into a shape that can go right back onto the unification. Very cool. Yeah, that's intense. That's some really clever construction. <clears throat> and yeah, you can see arms five, six, and seven are holding the complements, and it just goes brr the whole time. So it grabs the uh, grabs the atoms that disperse besides the fire. It calcifies them and then it dupes them in three separate locations. Got it. So it's interesting. It's solving the disposal problem that Mora ran into by making the quint not have to disperse <laughs> and recycling everything else. Mm -hmm. It's a different solution than putting them back over the input, but it works really well. Like at its core, this one process is even faster than anything we've seen before because it's running period three on the unification of complements. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it really does keep up that rate the whole time after setup. I love that it's pulling the salt input, but it's also suppressing the salt input with the known atoms so that it doesn't have to uh, dispose of the sample either. Like the sample disposes into the salt atom input and <laughs> the quintessence oh. is oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. dispersion nice. atoms. Right. Nice. This is really economical. Use every part of the cow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the core loop is is very, and it's 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 reusing the same stuff for initialization too. It uses this uh, unification for initialization, so it doesn't have separate initialization logic. I have a surprising amount of stuff for the uh, back end of it, where it's testing for uh, whether there's a match or not. It's rather complicated to run a period three, especially if you're building a stick buffer like that. Yeah, that's true. All right. Um, congrats on number four to Kevlar. Third place. Who is it? Stuff How low does it go? Pentapig at 817. All right. <laughs> so this solution has two phases, initialization and steady state. During initialization, the three complement elements of each element on the match pattern are computed. They are then distributed to the register wheels. This takes about 100 cycles because almost the entire layout was designed with only the steady state in mind. During the steady state, individual elements from the sample are compared with elements from the pattern. This happens 12 times per sample. The pre-computed complements allow each comparison to happen using just one unification attempt. The result of a comparison is a water that might appear next to the piston at the top. The top left mechanism then decodes the actual output from these waters. Fun facts, Gratelli does not get used. Things sometimes get crowded around ARM32, the Z track in the middle, but nothing collides. In fact, that track could support another ARM during the steady state. The input not gate returns, this time with gold. The salt output doubles as disposal, should a comparison fail. Or salt input yeah, doubles there's disposal, yeah. Yeah, salt input uh, suppression. It's also doing the same thing Kevalarin did of using dispersion to recover the atoms from a successful match. Mm -hmm. Except yeah, just this is, this is compliments done by someone who's really good at marble game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is it me or Kelly? There's enough of a gap that I could believe it's me winning, but goodness, I have no idea. <laughs> Kelly apparently explored both complements and lock and key, so I'm worried because they thought of more good viable ideas than I did. Mm -hmm. This one is interesting because the complement definitely didn't make this easy for Pentapig to hold his <laughs> position. Yeah, this one the the um, complement is stored as like a transpose of the complement, where it's like the the. the first atom of the Burlo is one, the second atom of the Burlo is another one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what Kevalarin did as well. Mm. 
the three sticks, I noticed that one of them had a repeat atom in it, and I was like, wait, how's that possible? Oh, it's the transpose. Right. This is more area optimized than mine, but less cost optimized. Roughly the same cycle count. I'm mm. really curious. I tend to overvalue cost in these cost large slashed weighted sums, but still. Interesting that the result is always a water. Oh, I guess because it's coming off of this, uh, this cliff here. Yeah, it's the dispersion piece that isn't needed. In fact, yeah, actually, now that I think about it, Cavalier was wanding off the salt that was placed onto the input, but was throwing away the fire that carried the exact same bit of information from the dispersal. Mm -hmm. If it was more convenient travel-wise to use the fire where Spentapig here is using the water, right. then that saves a lot of weight at some. You could probably mirror this solve and use fire instead of water. I guess you'd have to do something different with the Burla, too. But... Yeah, it's the same concept. Just dispersal, dispersal has its particular ordering. Right. All right. Uh, congrats to Pentapig on number three. Now we number have two. number two. We have... Aliuresis at 792, sub 800. Yes! I got <laughs> it, I got it, I win. And congr congrats. I do want to see what this is, because it's, holy crap, 299? Yeah, 299 well, cycles. Fast. The idea behind the solution is to turn each atom into a two-atom molecule where the orientation okay, encodes the element. Complex. Checking for equality between two molecules can be performed by spinning them next to each other with a glyph of duplication and checking if the duplication is successful. The three match what pattern atoms become fixed <laughs> wheels that constantly rotate <laughs> what is this? and get turned into fire by each matching atom. Checking for the full match is just performing an and between the three wheels, Checking, uh, which I do by transporting a fire atom across the wheels with triplex. If any fire atoms make it across all three wheels, they will wand away the salt waiting to get output. The main advantage is of this, this algorithm key? is that only two unifications are needed per atom, and only against known reference elements. Yeah, it's a key, I think. It's a, this it's is a lock a and very, key. This is a very clever lock. It's like lock and key was thought of two weeks ago, and then the marble implementation of it was given some brilliant mind two weeks. I think this looks so cool. I did not expect lock and key. <laughs> Neat. And Kelly had mentioned in chat that lock and key was a possible um, viable alternative. At least they hope so, because they tried both, and this is the one they settled on. Uh huh. Ah, oh, that's so nice to have the timing locked with each other. And there's no BS collision? This looks like it's prime <laughs> right for the BS collision. The thing is there, it's it's I not... I think they're all like fully it, three atoms apart. Yeah, so oh, yeah the pivot point is a, this nice three atom triangle atoms. Three, three, yeah, three they're three all on the triangle grid, so they no BS collision. Yeah, this wins cycles. This is the fastest solution that we have. Mine only makes up on this on cost. That is a wacky lock and key <laughs> mechanism. <laughs> I was expecting compliments all the way through. It's nice to see this. Yeah. <laughs> Just let it run with some more test cases here. Because it looks cool. Oh my gosh. I see now in the bottom right. It's a... Uh... It's sending the match pattern in just once and then pulling the sample in over it to suppress it from then on. It's even like all the, the tiny optimizations that make this have the best secondaries or not even secondaries, cost and area uh -huh. that I can. Yeah, it's just hidden right under here and constantly suppressed so you just don't have to worry about it anymore. This has to be the most disposal, disposal efficient algorithm. Oh yeah, it's basically doing none of it. <laughs> the coolest algorithm, at least heat generated.
How does it end up having a single fire in the the spinny grid? Like all of the spin points are gold except for one that is a fire, which is irrelevant. I oh, mean, yeah. it's just a hell of a meta. It's <laughs> funny that the fire makes it in. <laughs> yeah, let's see. I think it's not always fire as well. Yeah, sometimes it's just all gold. No, no, here's oh, no, the fire. No, there's the fire. Yeah. I think it's just the comes the fire from this. It in there. Yeah, just convenient somehow to bring it in. Yeah. Where is the gold input? It's over here, yeah. So it's probably just more convenient to bring a fire from this side rather than bringing more gold over. Uh, yeah, that makes more sense. Probably for cycles optimization, for initialization, cycles optimization. Mm -hmm. That's. I, I feel like we haven't seen what it looks like when it matches. Okay, so all three are fire, so it moves here. Oh wait, it changed already. It's too fast. <laughs> oh, now the... Oh, no, wait, okay, yeah, should work. Here. So now it should. One, two, three, two... And then they all carry the fire. <laughs> And then uh, this one should get fire too, and it carries it here. And then this one, it bonds here, and moves it over here. So now the salt... Which it then and just moves yeah. the salt out of the way so that it outputs gold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if it's three fires in a row, that means it succeeds and there's no more salt there. And then it's just the output condition, uh, mm -hmm. input conditional. And what happens with this gold that's sitting here? I guess something uh, disposes it at some point. It needs to get out of the way for initialization. Yeah, but then it has to output. I guess it only has to output once because then it has like the next atom hiding in the X arm, right? Hmm. I, I kind of want a way to set the reagent to be like all... all... You can do that if you uh, turn off the computation mod. But... I guess that's true. That's with it though. Oh, the first gold is always. Like... Oh, 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 I see. Yeah, Starfish says the first gold is always gold, so it needs to be moved out of the way. That makes sense. Yeah, and then every time it's just the next atom that will be output. It just doesn't output it yet because it's still computing. It does the last two outputs together? I think. I see. I see. I see. That makes sense. Really cool stuff. I really like how the orientation of those three pivoty atoms, like you just have them to be the match pattern is three of the same. And so then they were spinning in unison. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. <sighs> Marble game loves when things go spinny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really cool that this uh, solution was able to be so competitive because it kind of did seem like the complement style solve would be just everything in the, the top. But... Yeah, what does cool Biggie stuff. have? But yeah, um, first place, Biggie Mac 42. 740. Yeah. Oh, that is compact and cheap. It's a cheap, and... it's a cheap, cheap compliment solve, comparatively. <laughs> yeah? It's uh, using permutation of the um, dispersion elements to build a pinwheel that has on its three spokes the three complement atoms, and then once it's in steady state, the pinwheel just goes chop, chop, chop. <laughs> nice. That's fun. It's really fun. And it uses the kind of the same thing as uh, uh, was it Cavalier did, where you send the stuff out. the atoms that didn't get um, used over the input, and since it's always in sets of three, the input is used to restore there being three of them. So instead of unification to ah. recover. Them, Using the input. Use the input. I see. Mm -hmm. 
There were uh, about six redesigns. <laughs> Yeah, there three was... of them were based on triplex, and then the three of them that were based on um, complements started around eight nineteen, and then I cut it down seven ninety and seven forty eight. Yeah, there was one that used a triangle shape instead of the pinwheel. Yeah, I really liked just talking about my solution in DMs with Panic as big triangle, but then when pinwheel was able to beat it, I thought, you know, pinwheel is still beautiful. That's good as <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And the, the way that it swings in here, just like dodging through the three salts is very cool. Yeah, I definitely built a test puzzle to make sure that none of these would collide before I committed to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely looks like a, will this collide, will it not? <laughs> in terms of how I'm actually sensing whether there was a match or not, I'm using the atom that didn't get consumed. The quint is always just going to go straight into the disposal, but the atom that didn't get consumed moves over to the tile that's, there's this trapezoid track on the left, and it will grab that and on its way to disposal do a bond move. Mm. And if I do three of those bond moves, only one of them needs to happen for the salt to be moved over the debonder. And any one of them happening means that there was a no match. So then all the logic about uh, whether to output salt or gold is actually pretty simple. Yeah, the combined cost is like 80, 100 or something for this part, and then 20 more, so yeah, like 120 G. It's so much still programming. It's forced 6P whenever you do this. But I did my darndest best to get the um, same arms that are running the work loop to be the ones to help build the complement without losing tons of cycles. Yeah, I think that's very helpful. Uh, I can tell you this isn't the winning sum solve because I had an 890 that was only, uh, or 890 gold that was only two area bigger or something, like 185 gold. Let's see, 890 gold, 185 area. Same cycle count. Mm -hmm. so there was a, a gold area trade-off that, that piston on the left was making better for weighted sun, but not better for sun sun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I checked earlier, and I think one of Biggie Saul's was the winning sum. Let me see. I have a script here. Yeah, it says the winning sum is 1476. Which is maybe your that other submission? Oh no, that's this, isn't oh, that's it? That's this. You add up these three numbers. Fourteen seventy six is the answer. So I guess I didn't submit the version. Yeah, I think there was a version that I thought, oh, but I can do even better. So I didn't bother submitting. It was seven fifty one weighted sum, but slightly better sum. Makes sense. But yeah, with straight sum, the uh, top five would be Biggie Mac, and then second Pentapig, third Calyresis, fourth Goodbye Galaxy. And huh. fifth, careful, Aaron. <laughs> That's not actually surprising. Who would rise from far away to the top five? <laughs> and Haxton Solve would also uh, place quite well, actually above Goodbye Galaxies. I think I want people to look at the uh, trapezoid track grabbing the salt input. Because it's got to do several separate things during steady state. It's either going to duplicate off of the sample or from that lowest point on the track, reach up and grab the atoms in the sample to prevent needing any duplications. Uh, but also at one point in its work loop, it just yeets a salt over to the left, which is the wand check. That way there's already a salt present that I can use to do the output instead of needing to have there be a gold and convert it to a salt in some confusing way. Mm -hmm. Being able to move the salt input connection to the quintessence unification glyph over to a position where I could then also use it as the wand. Like the geometry of reconfiguring this kind of a solution three times allowed me to finally see that. But I would say that's probably a, a sneaky saving that's worth a lot more than you would first think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very, very much like a sum tech of just a couple arms on a track that are doing several things. Because, yeah, it's, it's grabbing from here, grabbing from here, and moving. 
This was probably 30 hours in my last two weeks. It's too many, but I'm glad I did it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess it paid off. It paid off. Even though it probably won't change like the total score as much, but uh, getting first in computation again is probably nice. <laughs> yeah, it was I, I'm going to keep my notoriety even if I'm not going to be top three on this tournament as a whole. Mm -hmm. And it was a pretty significant drop too. It was like uh, how to do math, like 40 something, 44. Yeah, so Kevlarans was still over 900. Pentapig was low 800s. Kali was 792. So this was another 45 ish. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Well, <clears throat> congrats to. You don't uh, have the massive leads as in uh, EOU anymore. <laughs> yeah, there's no metric. Uh, oh, yeah, this, so it's good. not quite that massive. Yeah. I mean, this one, yeah, it was the same, uh, I guess, algorithm just done. Cleanly. Yeah, just much more efficiently. I mean, in ELU, second place was Voidify, the only other person to find the uh, finite state machine algorithm, but they had, uh, I think, plus about 100 in OM and efficiencies. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me grab the showcase solves for this. Are you re-downloading? Because I did submit my Big Beat as a triple X. Showcase. Yeah, that's what I'm doing, re-downloading. One of the things that I had in all of my early designs that I'm glad I'm getting to show it as showcase instead is that length three arm swap in place. Like when oh. you have two length three arms rotating at us. Oh, 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 because that's the way I keep there being fire on the unification glyph without needing to pull from the salt input. Let me also re download the sim stuff. Let's see how the sim is doing actually. Oh, there's just one. Solution running. I think. For some reason it's not downloading. Okay. Yeah, no, it's just somehow guilty bystander solution is the only one running. Okay. Uh -huh. Let me open the auto hotkey for the showcases. So, so we can look at Biggie's first. Ah, uh, yeah, this is the triplex one. So yeah, this one's six ninety one cycles. There's a swap. So if you look at how the quintessence goes from unification over to dispersion, it's leaving a fire in the right place so that it can always reload the fire without needing to draw from the salt input. Oh. So that salt input can live underneath the uh, hex arm next to Brillo. It does mean I have more disposals to do, but it works. This has really similar gold and area to my complement salt, but about twice the cycle count, so it wasn't going to beat it. But I didn't know how, how fast complements would get until I got to my next design after this. But yeah, that... There's a little bit of logic going on on the triplex cliff to distinguish two fires and one fire. And then if nothing is there, it's just zero fire, so there's not even any work to do. Right. I think Hax and Solve had two triplex, and this one's just doing it with one. But yeah, the the link three swap is definitely the highlight of this one, I would say. Yeah. And when I had imagined doing three of these unification cores to get it down to four cycles per comparison, uh, there were going to be so many more link three swaps because instead of swapping just fire, each unification had to provide two atoms back, or each dispersion had to do two atoms sent back to the dispersal. Mm. So it was doing the link three swap on pairs of atoms. So that's still possible, but it's much sketchier and a mess. I didn't finish that solve, and it's better that I didn't because I got my mind something mm -hmm. better. I guess I have a showcase from Gecko. Proof, <laughs> <laughs> proof of concept conditional. The six loop monster proof of concept that I started with before going slower and cheaper, my 11 loop concept. Yeah, it sure is a thing you can do. <laughs> <laughs> 
So yeah, the long burlo. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and yeah, this is a doing doing a similar thing um, where the absence of these doesn't matter because it's just moving along. The river of arms on the track. I do think there's so many cool looking Opus Magnum designs that unfortunately get punished pretty hard on any good metric here, but it mm -hmm. still looks so good. All right, next up we have a solve from Steven. Non-functional. Yo, Steven submitted. <laughs> the hell is this? <laughs> uh, Goodness. Oh, God. it doesn't finish. There's the salt input. There's the... It's uh, period four. <laughs> of course it is. I think as he described it, it's period four lock and key. <laughs> Oh jeez! It doesn't finish though. Sadly, it's got <laughs> zero metric point. What it's got the zero point? metrics thing. Yeah. Uh. Look at the funky quint glyph. I guess that's this one. It's. Testing which combinations they are and encoding it into eventually this big long salt and fire stick. Mm. Oh, I see. It's building it here. So this is kind of like what Rebix was doing, I guess, in principle, or like what is planning to be. Is locking key really the most Stevenizable algorithm <laughs> that this solve was uh, <laughs> provided? I found a pretty good TI start for just the super naive comparisons. It's looking like it'll be around 100 TI at around 124th P. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's more off to the right. It's stealing off this stuff. It seems not finished though. What's happening to the very right? Something. Uh. <laughs> this is the encoded match pattern. It has the fires corresponding to the three, um, the three atoms of the match pattern. But I am not sure if it's going to successfully send that information for the uh, sample atoms. It might take a moment. <laughs> What if this actually is able to solve? I mean, it does say non-functional. Does it crash, or does it, or was it just never like finished, run to completion? That is. When does it stop working? That is the question. Okay, here it goes. What's gonna happen? Steven mentioned it takes five minutes to get it to the part that it was starting to fail on. Well, we got speed ups. Okay, we got some pieces of four. Oh yeah, the only one that stuck around was the one that actually matched. So if there's 12 atoms up at the top, then uh, it's a match. If there's fewer than 12 atoms, it's not a match, but there's no access on it, so it's done here. I see. But this is period four and getting to the point where it's computed the number of matches among three atoms. <laughs> so really solid effort on the Steven style. Yeah. 
This was a pr period primary computation. Uh, maybe next year. Period primary computation would be Steven. Hello. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I guess this is gonna not work from here on. Yeah, the next key that comes in is gonna be wrong. I see. Alright. Well, I mean, it's not gonna be wrong, but it's gonna crash into the uh -huh. stuff that's still on there. What's this? <laughs> this is from Andrej K. Called Unfinished as well. Holy uh, moly. <laughs> no notes. Seems to be doing uh, triplex. So it seems like maybe a parallelized. Uh... Oh. The collision here. But it seems like the idea is to do the um, triplex filter and then. Uh -huh. Parallelize one, two, three, four stations. So I guess each station Wait. handles like one atom of the input pattern or something? How's it? Or no, each each station handles Or no, each station handles one of the four parts of the input. So it's doing it in parallel. But yeah, unfortunately there's a crash. Dang. Yeah, the most basic algorithm with triplex filtering and parallelized uh, times four. This is about as nightmarish to start as the one that I was working on that I didn't finish. Uh -huh. Um, Steven, latest iteration still unfinished. Probably best to go with the other one. This one does look, it's the same I don't think solve. we need to yeah. watch through the whole thing. <laughs> but yeah, that's, okay. the, that's the last showcase solve. Similar, yeah. I'm going to finish my TI at some point, but that's, it's not ready. Yeah, be fun to see the 124th P, it'll be a hoot. Let me rerun the... Auto hotkey for this one so we can get the right rankings. Yeah. Just double check guilty bystander has the right one. Yeah, it is. The right update one. the score sheet. Yeah, do you want to do that? I can send you the. Yeah, we can do that on stream this time, actually, since it's the last one. Oh, yeah, no, good idea. Um, let me get the files. Now I'll DM those to you. And I can, let's see, is there a way for me to bring up this on stream? I like how you used extra with an X so that it sorts correctly. Uh, further down alphabetically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, All right, where's Opus Tools 2023? Save. Need to actually look up the. See if this works. Uh, spreadsheet. So let me just add a window capture. Is this working? You know what? I'll leave all the bonus 10 points as gold. Y'all deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Uh, wrong chat at BG. Um, nice. <laughs> I did it. So what does average go up? Average is to Q2. All right, yeah, that's. Oh, should be good. And.
change the color of that. And uh, copy in the actual results. Fine. Cool. Is that up to date then? Should be. Okay, cool. Why is one of these uh, solution names so long? <laughs> and now to update the graph as well. Oh, cool. Go look at that. There we go. I might change the colors of those. I'm going to make it. Congrats to everyone. This was a fantastic tournament. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Big thanks to Panic, too. Yeah, it was uh, fun to organize it. I need to, mm -hmm. I need to write an epilogue for the lore. I forgot to do that. Oh, that would be fun. But yeah, I guess I will congratulate the uh, I guess first, second, and third place. Yeah, so yeah, congrats to Pen and Pig on uh, first place. Aliresis to on second place. Spiritual Shampoo on third place, and uh, I guess Fiesta and Biggie as well on top five. And I don't know. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Also, I don't know. I don't know how long I, down I should go on this list. Revix, Goodbye Galaxy, Mr. Puzzle, Bambi, and OMG, it's a best on top 10. There, I'm stopping there. And congratulations to, to everyone who top submitted uh, as well to any of these weeks, seriously. Um, I know it's like a lot of work to make these solves. And uh, mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah, I appreciate it. And uh, thanks to the everyone who joined me on commentary as well throughout the weeks yeah You're thanks welcome. for having us yeah yeah um who else should i thank let's see oh yeah mr puzzle thanks for the uh mod support like mm -hmm. that was You're a welcome. that was a lifesaver on week two i think it was as well as this week obviously <laughs> but yeah week two with the collision stuff um made things go much more smoothly um mm -hmm. missed for the spreadsheet stuff and also the Help with the stream setup and auto hotkey and all that. Yeah. And um, no oh yeah, the playtesters too. Shadow Cluster, Gecko Six, and Haxton. Really helpful, making sure that my puzzles were not completely uh, ridiculous, or at least telling me when they were ridiculous, <laughs> so that I could make the decision to publish them anyway in the case of uh, certain weeks. But uh -huh. <laughs> they were appropriately ridiculous. Thank you. <laughs> uh, glad to hear that. But yeah, I guess that ends the Obus Magnum 2023 tournament. Thank you all for participating. Yeah, hope to see you. See everyone. you on the weeklies. Come yeah. join. <laughs> yes, yes, weeklies. Not next plug. year. Come join the weeklies. <laughs> yeah, and any, I, I think there's there's been a few uh, talk of some other events too, like uh, potentially a computation themed event. Yeah. So we'll see what turns up. And yeah. If you're not in the Discord watching this on YouTube or something, definitely go check that out. And yeah, see ya. See ya.